another video here focusing on imaginary and complex numbers, but this one is going to focus specifically on multiplying complex numbers where you have a real and complex component. So let's take a look. First, to get an idea of your multiplication, we'll take a look at a simple example where you just have i um, out front of a binomial or a complex number where you have a real part and a complex part. And it's as simple as just doing your distributive property. So if we distribute our i to both parts here, then what's going to become is a 5i plus 3i squared. Now I have i squared in a different color here because remember, i squared is equal to a negative 1. So this turns into 5i plus 3 times a negative 1. And when you multiply 3 times negative 1, of course, we have 5i minus 3. Now it doesn't really matter for us whether you write it as 5i minus 3 or negative 3 plus 5i. Either of those would be acceptable. Um, just make sure that you keep the negative with the 3. Secondly, we're going to look at a couple examples where you have um, two complex numbers, where you have a real component and an imaginary part component for both. So you have 5 plus 3i multiplied by 5 minus 3i. Now in our work that we've done before, we've done examples where you've done something like x minus 4 times x plus 8 or something along those lines. And what we did is we created a generic rectangle in order to help us multiply those things. Well, that's exactly what we're going to do here, is we're going to create a generic rectangle um, and, and do the multiplication. So here we have our generic rectangle where you have 5 plus 3i across the bottom and 5 minus 3i across the top. So as you do your multiplication, 5 times 5 is equal to 25. And then you're going to have your 5 times 3i, which is 15i down here. And then in the top left, you have 5 times a negative 3i, so negative 15i. And then you got to be careful with this one where you have 3i times a negative 3i in this scenario. And that is going to become a negative 9i squared. And what we notice at first is that you see that you have a negative 15i here and a positive 15i. Those are actually going to cross each other out. So those go away altogether. That's nice in this particular scenario. Um, and this, there's a specific reason why those cancel out, which we'll get to later. And then you have to be careful with your negative 9i squared because, again, we know that our i squared is a negative 1. So this is actually not negative 9i at all, or negative 9i squared. It is equal to just a negative 9 times negative 1 or a positive 9, which is actually pretty interesting then because since these two spots canceled each other out, i squared is a negative 1, so that's positive 9. This all boils down to just a simple 34. So it's actually quite interesting that you can multiply a complex number by another one and you end up without any imaginary part at all and it's equal to 34. Now that's an interesting example. Let's take a look at one that doesn't boil down quite as nicely. So if you have 14 plus i times 5 plus 3i, you would still make your generic rectangle. So here's our generic rectangle, 14 plus i across the bottom, 5 plus 3i across the top. So as we do our multiplication in each spot, you do 5 times 40, uh, sorry, 5 times 14 rather, and you get uh, 70. And then you have uh, 5 times i on bottom right, which is just 5i. 14 times 3i, which is actually 52i, and that's positive. And then in the top right corner, you have i times 3i, which is a positive 3i squared. Now in this scenario, these do not cancel each other out. So that's okay, you can add those together, but you do have this i squared, which is here. Of course, 3i squared is going to turn into 3 times a negative 1, because i squared is a negative 1, which is a negative 3. That's what that part equals to. So when you combine your like terms, now we have these two terms, which are your i terms, and then you have a real component, and this actually turned into a real component as well, so 70 minus 3 is going to be 67, 52i plus 5i is 57i. And so uh, what you'll notice is that neither of these answers have an i squared in it. And that's important because you want to simplify that i squared to be a negative 1. And so you'll do that every single time you do your multiplication in this scenario. 
This example on the right does have an i, and that's okay. Uh, 52 plus 5i is just a 57i. And that's how you go about multiplying your complex numbers.